Hi everyone, and welcome to another BAPT In Conversation With webinar. Um, here we are in 2021 in another lockdown of COVID virus um, and heading towards another great conference as well. The BAPT conference is celebrating 100 years of psychological type this year, We're doing a virtual conference. We've got some amazing speakers from all over the world, some great experts to share in this special conference. Um, so do have a look at that on BAPT.org.uk. Um, we, the British Association for Psychological Type, um, are, we're a charity based in the UK. Um, our mission is to, is to spread um, good information and best practice to do with psychological type. Um, we've got a great guest here today who is quite well known in, in the type community for defending type and Myers-Briggs uh, against it. Um, Negative, negativity and attacks, uh, but it, he spent a long time as an organizational consultant. He, he's worked with uh, the great Otto Kroger and, and basically runs the company he, which he founded now. Um, so it's a great pleasure to welcome Heil Rutledge to today. Hi, how are you doing Heil? Doing well, it's uh, very exciting to be here. And thank you, we've got the people from all over the world. Uh, uh, the um, uh, in, in this conversation. So thank you for plugging in the, and inviting me today. I'm honored. That's really great to have you here. So you know, nice to start off and um, look at sort of um, what, what you're doing now, you know, um, OKA, uh, that stands for Otto Kroger Associates. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. More and more we are, are trading under or going by OKA because sad to say the the longer we go after since Otto left the company and even since Otto passed in 2013, we um, fewer and fewer people engaged with him. And so so we you'll see OKA more and more often, but it, it does stand for Otto Craig or Associates. Yes. Mm. For those who kind of came into type a bit later, um, you know, what um, what was Otto's legacy and what, what did he bring to the sort of psychological type world? So. Actually, that's we talk a whole hour on that, and I, I would love it. But the um, he is a um, one of the founding parents of the of the field, um, and he uh, first took the indicator back in 1967, and he it hadn't even been released as a publicly accessible tool, and um, he worked uh, in person with uh, Isabel Myers um, a couple of times, and the um, and so. But unlike most of the founding parents of the field, uh, he was extroverted and he was very much not only a salesperson, he was a showman. And we had the, the, the field as most fields started uh, with, with, um, with some core really brilliant, but very true to type introverted intuitives, uh, Jung and uh, David Kiersey and Isabel Myers and Catherine Briggs. And I myself, I'm an INFP. So uh, this isn't an insult to introverted intuitives, but, the, um, but they uh, were great at conceiving uh, this, this thing and, and uh, understanding its complexity. But what we needed was somebody who could actually turn it into a show, actually uh, plug it in, find the people and make people really excited about it. And that was, um, and Otto did that brilliantly. And so he, uh, his trainings were, were always very rich in content. He was a psychologist. He was a, had been a minister for 20 years. He knew how to engage a crowd and inspire a crowd. He also knew the depths of this, this tool. He was also a counselor, uh, and, but he, he knew how to get people excited and energized. And that's I think one of his greatest legacies is to wake them up, make them laugh, and make them learn at the same time. Wonderful. And so, what does OKA? Uh, what kind of work do you do currently? Well, we are a consulting and training firm that, that specializes in leadership and team development, and so we uh, we do kind of full spectrum organization development work. But our, but our niche is focusing in on leaders and teams. Um, it's funny, everything we do, and we still do a lot of work with type, a lot of work with the Myers-Briggs, although our, our tool kit has really grown considerably. We have about a dozen tools that we certify on, but everything we do comes from uh, the, the, the foundation that type gave us, and that is um, greater self-awareness that leads to better self-management, greater self-awareness, which leads to better self-management. 
So whether we're talking about type or um, uh, emotional intelligence or influencing styles or motivation, whatever, it doesn't matter. It, start with know yourself and know how to manage yourself better in this role you have, whatever that is. Um, and the, um, and so that, that Otto's view of type actually built a foundation that we now apply to every tool we use. Mm. If you, you just got a question, what was Otto's type preferences? Well, so, so ENFJ, he reported his type and has validated his type as ENFJ. But the real story is actually much better. That um, uh, the first time he took the indicator in 1967, he came out an ENFJ. Um, now, every subsequent time he took the indicator over the years, he came out as an ENFP. Um, and he truly didn't know up until the last conversation we had a, a, a couple of weeks before he passed. Um, he wasn't sure, am I an ENFJ, am I an ENFP? And so it, it, when you think about it, I mean, that, that was uh, almost 45 years. And so to not know the answer to the question that long, that seems pretty P to me. Uh, but, <laughs> the, um, but so what type was he? ENFJ, and he validated ENFJ because he understood, again, self-management, it was the J-ness of his mouth that got him in trouble when he got in trouble. And, and so the quickness to shoot out with, a, a, with decision and order and structure, and, and, the, and so he needed to manage the sharpness of his reply. And so validated ENFJ, I'm um, reported ENFJ, but the real answer is stay tuned, ENFJ, ENFP. And I love the fact that the person who knew as much about type as anybody on the, in the world. There's nobody who knew more about type and the Myers-Briggs than he did. Um, and the, uh, so there are lots of people who knew a lot, but nobody knew more than he did. He still didn't know what type he was. That was very, um, very important that, uh, to, to make sure, I hope we get into it, but in terms of the, the mistakes that I think people make with type um, is they, they get too caught up in the label of it and in the static nature of it. And that's not the point. That's not what Jung wanted when he wrote this theory 100 years ago. Um, and, the, um, and so that's not where the gold is buried. And I love the fact that Otto embodied that stay open to it, stay open to the question, stay curious about yourself and what it means. Um, anyway, you didn't ask for all that, but that's the, that I think is also part of his legacy. Well, that's taking us down a really interesting path. So, you know, we're looking now at you know, what is that, where is the gold in type? You know, so if you to look at, you know, to, to describe well, what is type in a way that does justice to it as you understand it, how would you describe it? Oh, uh, that's, that's a great question, Richard. I think the, um, the, Type is a is a structure. It's a framework. It's a vocabulary that enables me to understand myself. What do I like? What do I don't? What's easy? What's hard? What what are my preferences? And preferences, I do think, are fairly static. Can they change? Have they ever changed? Sure, but do they tend to change? No. And so they are. So actually, understanding just like handedness, understanding kind of where I start is very important. But the, um, the, that has translated into, okay, so you're a this and I'm a that. Uh, yeah. and, and, and we put labels on each other and those labels lead to kind of limits and we limit ourselves. We, um, and we're kind of um, distinguished and uh, discriminated from each other because you're one of those and I'm one of these. And, and that is a, um, and so there, there are problems with that. If that's where we stick, then, it's so limited. And that's one of the reasons why Jung was not in favor of the Myers-Briggs being, uh, being put together. He never took it and he, he was not a fan. <laughs> the, um, because the, the Myers-Briggs evolved very quickly into a tool that was actually pretty anti-Jung. I mean, it, was, it, it didn't capture the spirit of what he was trying to do. So what was he trying to do? That Jung was very much into not labeling people. In fact, he actively said, this is the least important and useful piece of my theory. Um, he was about development and people who I think are insightful, smart, useful, the Myers-Briggs actually use it in terms of development. So I'm an INFP, INFP. So 
so yes, I am that, and you can label me that and everything you know about an INFP, 90 plus percent of that is true of me. Um, and um, type says that actually I am on the hook for all of it. Um, extroversion for sensing, for thinking, for judging, for that full activation and use of the judgment function, all of that. That's within me too. And in fact, I'm not going to live a good life. I'm not going to be effective uh, as, a, as a husband, as a father, as a trainer, as a fill in the blank, as an anything. If I can't actually pick up all of those tools and use them as appropriate when needed. Um, and, and so I need to learn how to flex and be objective and learn how to flex and actually be present in the sensing world. I need, I need to do all of those things. Um, and so type is really about learning how to grow into being able to pick up all the tools, cognitive tools and use them when I need them. Um, and hopefully um, I'll be better able to do that when I'm 60 than I was when I was 40 and better at 40 than I was when I was 20. And that's the journey we're on. It's a journey of, of openness, of unfolding, of development, of growth, not of labeling and static designations. And what Game of Thrones character are you? And what uh, the, uh, and, and I think the, the, the goal gets lost in a lot of those static designations. I'll try not yeah. to keep my answers so long, but no, anyway. it's great. I mean, you, know, you get like you know, like Jung was about you know a, a dynamic system, you know, a psyche which has polarities or attitudes, you know, towards certain things uh, that are common. And you know, we also want the goal at the end goal is not tight, but to transcend and, and to bridge those opposites, right? Um, well, they, so if I'm assuming most of the folks who are who are here in this conversation um, understand enough about type to know that underneath the, the label, underneath INFP and, and Richard, what what are your preferences? Oh, INTJ. INTJ, and the um, and so uh, so like for INTJ, of course, the um, and this is another uh, uh, challenge with with the Myers Briggs is that. Um, INTJ is built on an infrastructure that, that means, so that, that's a code, INTJ, that actually means your dominant function is introverted intuition. And then you've got extroverted thinking, and then you've got, uh, and your inferior function is extroverted thinking, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's got this code underneath the, kind of behind the curtain. And the, um, I love type dynamics. I've written about it. I, I train it with uh, whenever I can. So I, I like it. Uh, I'm, and there are gaps within that logic that you could drive a, a lorry through. I mean, it's not because it's not a, uh, the, like for instance, I'm an INFP. I don't wanna get lost in the weeds here, but I'm an INFP. My dominant function that uh, says uh, type is, is introverted feeling, introverted feeling. Yet the function, I know the functions really well and the function I like most and that I use most, that I'm most intrigued by, that I most rely upon, um, that I'm most seduced by is introverted intuition. It's mm. introverted intuition. And that's not even in my type code. Um, in the, uh, and the, um, it's not even one of my options. And so the, uh, um, but I'm not an INFJ. There's nothing J about me. So that, so that's not the case. I think people get lost in the static nature of this. And if you're this type, okay, so here's your dominant, here's your auxiliary, here's, it's like, that's a, a model that is um, reflective. It's like watch, looking at an, an impressionist painting and saying, well, what do you see, Richard? Here's what I see. Um, how about you, Catherine? Uh, um, uh, how about uh, you, um, Harumi? What, uh, what do you see? And so looking at that and, and learning from it, but not treating it as if it's a, a set of shackles and the, um, I think is, is useful. And that most people don't do that. And I don't fault the tool for that. I fault lazy, uninsightful, if that's a word, trainers and coaches for that, that um, the, uh, coaches and trainers that need scripts and, and rigidity rather than open conversations that really explore. Um, anyway, that's... Uh, it's interesting when you, you know, talk about the type code, you know, and then seeing what's behind the curtain. You know, switch that around it's like creating 
like Myers Briggs did, like a, a four dichotomy questionnaire. It's like it is putting a curtain over Jung's model. It's like it created the curtain, which kind of to some degree obscures what Jung's kind of eight functions. It does. I, I think it's. Uh... I, I love it. It has um, it has given me a career. It has uh, given me uh, um, a, 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 it. I mean the Myers Briggs, uh, and um, uh, so I'm a devoted fan. It has contributed immeasurably to my marriage, to my family, uh, and um, I think it uh, has also planted some seeds that um, that have made life hard for itself. It I, it it's violated some of the core tenets of Jung. I think it, unfortunately, and this isn't the tool's fault, but I think it, its publisher doesn't always have its best long-term interest in mind. I mean, I think it's set up some things around protecting its cash cow that have kind of hurt the, uh, the growth and the, of the of the tool, which I think is a shame. But the um, but I, I think it's um, um, it's it's a challenging tool uh, in in many ways that I also happen to love. Yeah, I would say for me, you know, that's how I got into psychology in the first place at all, you know, was really? Oh, uh, really? through, through, through uh, just learning about Myers-Briggs and it led me to do an MSc and, and so on, you know. So oh. that, let's go back to, you know, it is life-changing stuff. It's just like, I think when you get to the sort of, like you go back to Jung and you get into the sort of more advanced levels, you go, and then you really go, ah, okay, now I get what it's about. And it, it's kind of, it's a shame you don't get that from the start, but I'm more interested in, in how you discovered it. You know, at, at what sort of point in life did you learn about type and, and what personal impact did it have for you? Um, well, it's funny. I, I was a young man. I was in my early mid twenties and I had, um, I was working for an adult education school, uh, vocational school here in the States that, um, uh, and uh, in career development. And so uh, helping people, transition from school to work. And I was thinking somebody gave me uh, the Myers-Briggs. Actually, they didn't. They gave me, um, please understand me, David Kiersey's book that had a little quiz checklist in it that was Myers-Briggs-ish. And um, so I took it and, and I was, oh, this is intrigued. Well, I, I can go get certified on the Myers-Briggs. And I went came to OKA just because it happened to be geographically the closest facility that I could get trained. And it was, at the time, it was five days, five days in person, if you can imagine. That was back in the day when we used to do that. And the um, and I loved it. I, the, the whole class was meaningful. However, on day three of this five-day event, Otto Krager came in, and he did half a day by himself of temperament. Um, David uh, Kiersey's uh, kind of shortcut to type, NF, NTSJ, SP. And it was... Um, and it was life changing. I just, just, I mean, it was really the the, the roof parted and uh, God's light shone down on me and ah, angels singing. I mean, the whole it was rather dramatic. I, I it was it was so amazing seeing that guy in his element uh, do this. And I um, now a little young impression. Oh, I wasn't little, but impressionable in F. And I I thought I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy. Now it took me a couple of years for that to shift into. I want to do what he's doing. But I was very clear early on immediately that, no, I just want to graft my life on, <laughs> onto him. And that was a, um, and so I, I, um, I left and started my own consultancy. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I was just talking type and Myers-Briggs to anybody who would sit still long enough to listen to me. Um, and, but by doing that, I was getting referrals and somebody saying, hey, here's somebody, hey, why don't you go talk to him? And, and, the, uh, and so my, the circle started to grow and I developed this, uh, what in the rear view mirror I realized was, was a consultancy. Um, I came back a couple of years later to OKA to see if I could work here. Can I, can I be one of the trainers on your bench that you send out hither and yon to do, uh, to do work? And so I managed to jump through the hoops they had and, and be on their staff. And um, I got good in a hurry because I, they used me so much. And um, early on, I thought, oh, wow, I must be really good. I now realize it's because I was young and I would go wherever they told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> go wherever they told me and I would pay for whatever I would get paid whatever they offered uh, so whenever they said I said yes but the um I was uh but I just got a lot of trainings under my belt that way um and so it was um uh it was kind of interesting how I I got in and it was 
it was tight, but it was also tight from the mouth of, of Otto that really, um, that really made me see this is, this is amazing. Um, early on, I was married. I got married um, uh, 10 days after I graduated from college. So to somebody I, I went to middle school with. I mean, so I've, my wife and I have known each other for a long, long time. And she's an ENTJ, ENTJ. So we, uh, we, we only share intuition in common. And, um, and the struggles we had uh, early on in our marriage weren't exclusively, but 80% were, were type struggles. And uh, she struggled with my um, introversion and, um, and, and I with her extroversion, their JP issues, but whatever. And this enabled us to reframe each other as something other than normal freak. Uh, that uh, that it it could now be oh I understand that. I still don't like it anymore but I understand what you're doing and why and with that understanding comes some handles on therefore you could do this or I could do that and we could meet somewhere in the middle and it just gave us a structure and a vocabulary that enabled us to bridge some of these gaps the gaps don't go away mm -hmm. but we can understand the gaps and bridge them more I wouldn't be married if it weren't for um, if, if it weren't for tight. Uh, and la last story, just about, uh, about fast forward a number of years. My, uh, my son um, is now, my older son is now 22, just graduated from university here. But the, um, when he was in high school, so he was about 17, 18 years old, uh, he had a big senior project he needed to do. And he decided that he was going to, he'd been through some of my advanced trainings on type, love type, talked about it all the time. He's an INTJ as well. Richard, and he um, uh, stood up in front of the group and he had 15 minutes to, to do his, this capstone presentation. And he was gonna teach the, the class the basics of type and then help facilitate a discussion to, to um, type the characters of The Great Gatsby, F. F. Scott Fitzgerald's uh, novel, The Great Gatsby. And, the, um, and he was doing so well and the teacher liked it so much that, um, that he, she said, forget it, take the whole class. And so he wound up having an hour to, to teach type and, the, um, and then uh, talk about, well, Daisy and Gatsby. And, and, they, um, and so it was fascinating. I only found out about this afterwards. He said, oh, by the way, I got, a, I got an A on my thing and I didn't know he was doing it. I said, I could have helped you. He said, that's why I didn't tell you I was doing it. I, I, I don't need your help, um, but the um, but so it's um, it's done a lot for me personally, and it helped my son get out of high school. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, life changing. And you know, like I can attest, you know, it, it's a powerful model to understand in a ma in a marriage. You know, I, I benefit. Catherine's also posted the same. Um, yeah, see, Catherine's a yeah. It's it's just it's hard to uh, have it and inhale it and have your. Your partner and your family how, that, that you can't rely on that vocabulary it's just um it's fundamental mm. so, so, so that leads to something of type development you, you know we, we development we develop through our relationships we develop through uh, that, the, the ups and downs and, and the clashes that we have and the lessons we learn so you know have you found that you know you, you've become less one-sided as you've grown through that so, so, yes, I definitely have become less one-sided, um, but I, um, so sometimes what type does, I think for people, I'll, I'll, I'll personalize it and say for me, but I think this, it, I think it offers everybody the same path, that sometimes it teaches me tools so that I can overcome things about myself that I don't particularly like. Um, and the, um, and, uh, and that means overcoming liabilities that are true of the type. And sometimes instead, and I'll, I'll be specific about that, but sometimes instead what it does is it lets me know that that's just there and I got to make my peace with that. Um, and so, so for instance, the, one of the things, and it's very true of, of NFPs in general, but, but specifically of INFP, of my type preferences, that, um, that the, the desire for um, connection and uh, harmony, um, that that introverted F driver and that extroverted intuition, that, that open, flexible, uh, inquiring, curious, uh, uh, um, 
air out in the air, that, that combination is, uh, can be delightful. It is also passive aggressive. Uh, and that if I wanna go over here or I don't like that, rarely does the INFP say, I wanna go over there. I don't like that. They, uh, uh, we, uh, oh, do you, do you like that? Uh, hey, have you ever been like over there? Uh, so they're, they're just real slimy feeling, passive aggressive ways that the INFP can show up or at least it can look like that. And, um, and I don't like it. I don't, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like it when people do that to me. And so, and I, I because I'm an INFP, I can see through that, like use Neutrogena. I know I, I can see exactly. It's like, yeah, cut that out. What I would like um, is for us to be honest with each other. I'd like for you to like me and care about me enough to tell me the truth. Um, mm -hmm. And the, uh, we have safety, we have support. I will tell you the truth. And I really want you to do the same to me. Now, not all NFPs will take me up on that, but I, I will drip, 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 keep telling you that. And now that's a way in which I've overcome the tendency of INFP because I so dislike it when I see myself doing it. Um, it's, um, it's, it's rooted in sweetness and a desire for harmony, but it's dysfunctional and it's a version of lying. Um, and so to me. Um, and so the, uh, now one thing on the other hand, so that's overcoming something using type. Now, the, in the second bucket is um, the part of that INFP structure is uh, because I'm a, a, a P I'd, and an FP at that, I do not really want to manage or control you. Um, you, Richard, you people here, that it, anybody, the world, I really don't. Uh, I'd rather flex to it, be with it, understand it, relate to it, invited by it. Uh, I, I don't want to control it. Um, and so I think I'm a decent leader, but I'm a bad manager. I'm not a good manager because part of management means controlling the output, controlling the the. the and I don't really care. I don't, I, I might care a little bit, but not enough to actually do anything about it. Um, and so the, um, and so I, from the start need to say um, to the people that I work with and around and the people who look to me, not only to lead them, but to manage them, I'm not gonna do very well here. Uh, I'm gonna really, really try and I'm gonna get an average mark on a good day. And so I, I, we just need to know. Now, hopefully there are gonna be enough things that I excel on that in the end, I'll make up for that. But I need you to know it's not gonna happen. And even if I can squeeze it out today, then I'm gonna be so exhausted that I'm not gonna do it tomorrow. So just, uh, you need to know that. Um, and so sometimes it's about having grace with myself uh, with, and, and type lets you do that. Sometimes in column A, these things you can actually manage to flex and change. These other things just comes, it's like a set. And if you get this, you also get that, you just need to be aware of it. And so those things, I have, it's, it's helped me a lot in those ways. Mm. Interesting, yeah, like it's a kind of, is it, yeah, it's, it's a fine line between kind of accepting your limitations and, and, and but at the same time, not flexing yourself and not pushing yourself, you, you have to, know where that line is i guess and i think the line is always uh, is always moving uh, because i think there is some things you can change and a lot of things you can't but even the things you can't you can plan around you can talk about you you can um uh, you can be honest about and so i think it's a both and um the um and so i um uh, and, and, and type gives you a structure and a vocabulary for you to manage yourself around those things uh, and to ask. I can't control what you do and how you treat me, Richard, but I can ask you for what I want. I don't know that you're going to give it to me, but I can guarantee I'm not going to get it if I can't even ask you for it. And so that's the um, and type gives us that shared language. Mm. So, you know, like you were saying, it's it's right you know for really understanding personal relationships um you know and you're working in organizations with teams and, and so on and you've got a toolkit you know how, how do you sort of make the decision right type is that is the right thing to use in this situation what, what are your sort of criteria for that well one of the things one of my favorite things i've in fact i don't think i've talked about type in the last 15 years probably that i haven't used this image i usually get a a flip chart 
draw it on it. I've, I've got it in slides, but I don't like slides. If I can, I'd rather draw it. But, but it, so if you can imagine um, a, uh, a Venn diagram, uh, two circles overlapping, and one circle is, um, is type and the other circle is behavior. And so the, um, so the, one of the biggest mistakes made in our field, I think, in, in terms of the field of, of learning and development, but certainly in the in Myers-Briggs community, is thinking that these two circles are the same thing and that one predicts the other. They don't. That type is, it, is a, the, comes from Jung's model that's about cognition. It's a, type is a model of cognition. How is our brain wired to gather data and make decisions? That's all. I mean, that's a lot, but that's all. And so how are, is our brain wired to perceive and judge? That's all type is. Um, and the, um, now behavior is much bigger. That circle is much bigger. And that's, what do you do? What are your choices? What do you say? How do you act? Um, and there's overlap between those two. Some of your uh, behavior comes from your, your wiring. You know, Richard, you are a, a, a quiet, pensive, thoughtful person. Those are the behaviors I see from you and you prefer introversion. Well, that makes sense that the, some of your introversion will manifest that way. But, um, but there are a number of parts of your behavior of, of like of my behavior that I have to put my preference aside to go to work. I, 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 my preference is for introversion, but my work and, and much of my life is extroverted. I'm talking to you. I, I do this group. I, I did a gig this morning. When I get off from you, I'm about to do another one. And so the when the, so it's it's about coming out and engaging and performing and showing. And, and so you just set your introversion aside and go do what you need to do. Um, and there's nothing in type that says you can't do that. And so your question was, how do you know when to use type, and how do you how do you know when to use something else or when not to use type? And so. What I try and discern um, is, is what you're after, somebody being able to understand who am I and what am I about? What's driving me? What's, do I understand me to manage me? Or am I more intrigued by, am I more interested in looking at what are the behaviors we want to see? And what are the behaviors that I'm trying to train for? Um, because there are some behavioral tools my favorite these days is the EQI, the emotional intelligence, but that's just one. There are lots of them. The strengths finder is a big one. And anyway, there, here are behaviors. And if you don't know how to do them, here's how to do them and let's go practice. I mean, so that's a behavioral model. And then there's, uh, there are models that are, are more about, but what's underneath that behavior? How am I wired? The Myers-Briggs is a great one. Um, there are other type tools. We've just onboarded a tool called the drive that's about uh, motivation. And so what, what's driving and draining your decisions? And so that's, that's great to, to use along with behavior. Behavior is the what, the drive is the why behind what you're doing. And so I think knowing what is it that you're after, you client, you leader, you, uh, or what do you have more of a taste for um, that uh, in terms of which of these circles do we grab, or at least do we grab first? Mm, yeah, it's, it's a great, great point. You know that in, in you know some models, personality equals behavior to you know pretty closely. But in, in type, it's really that's not necessarily the case, is it? As you say, right. someone's behavior could tell a completely different story to what their underlying dispositions and preferences are. Um, and in fact, so I, I mean, you know this very well as a as a as a counselor, uh, but the. Um, but in terms of, um, if you imagine that Venn diagram of type and behavior, um, if they overlap quite a lot, significantly, that, and so basically that means I just show up as myself and I fit so easily into whatever role I have, whatever job I have. I mean, that's nice work if you can get it. Um, the, um, but for a lot of people, there's, there's not, I mean, there's significant amounts that don't overlap. And, and, and some, the circles are almost completely uh, disconnected. Just a quick story. I had a guy, this was, it's been a while, it's been seven or eight years, but it was a physician here in the States that was, um, he was a surgeon, 
He was a surgeon. Now, surgeons, we know if you're into type and have thought about this or done, looked at the research, surgery as a gig, I mean, as a job, is very introverted, very sensing, very thinking, very judging. It's ISTJ. So there's a big um, uh, draw, um, a self-selection of ISTJ to surgery. Um, well, this guy was an ENFP, ENFP, four-letter opposite, and, um, and was actually very accomplished in his field. Uh, he was an academic high achiever. He was um, uh, very sought after um, and he hated his life. And so here he was around midlife, found his way to, to me, to us here, um, thinking what's, what have I done? I can't, I can't do anything else. Cause one, I've got golden handcuffs on. I mean, I've got, uh, I, 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 all my life has led me to this point and um, I'm really successful at it. I don't know how to do anything else, but I hate it. Um, and so, and that's because there wasn't a lot of overlap in his circles. My, my behavior is this, but my wiring is here and they just don't help each other out. Um, and the, um, and so that's, thinking of it that way really does help um, to, uh, in terms of self-awareness and trying to bring some alignment to your life, I think. Mm, that's, a good, that's a good point. So I certainly, I think most of us have seen that situation where people are, you know, pretty out of preference or what we all would call um, falsification of type. You know, it's, a, it's a funny term, but you know, living, what's kind of living a lie is almost another way. But like you said, people will know when, when something is drastically wrong that they're so out of alignment with, and, and it comes out that, in, that in, intrinsic kind of preference, that's that self, that you, and actually tapping into the, the experience of that is something that's quite unique to type, rather than, like you said, that kind of almost projecting ourselves out there to, to to, to try and objectively look at our behaviors. Yeah. Um, so, so let's talk a bit more about the development side of it then. You know, that's one example is people developing into their natural preferences. The other one we've talked about is people developing the other side, the non-preferences from a, a place of having followed their preferences. Which of those do you see um, and, and enjoy working with? Well, actually they're, they're both. I started in career development, like I mentioned. And the, um, and so even though I don't, I wouldn't define myself as a career development guy now, I, I still do that all, all the time. I mean, at any given time, I have somebody who's seeking me out for specifically career development work. And the, um, and so that, while of course that, that work can branch out in any number of ways, they're basically there's a fork in the road and, and you got to pick one or the other. And that is that if you are not really aligned with, with the demands of your life right now, and so we're talking career, but that could be relationship. It could be personal life. I mean, that, that, that's varied. Um, and so if, if how you're wired and the you that you now understand yourself to be, um, and the, the me here at 50 was maybe not the me here at 40 or me here at 30. So that my understanding of that shifts and morphs. And so my understanding of that, what I am and who I am doesn't really align with the, with the roles and expectations I now have to fulfill. Then I've got two basic choices. Here's the road that force. One is how do I now strengthen the muscles to allow me to keep doing this role? Um, it's thrusting a lot of, in type terms, it's thrusting a lot of sensing on me. And I'm not, a, a, a sensing isn't my preference. It's a lot of judging and structure and closure and order. And I don't do that. And so how do I learn how to do that? Make peace with that and get better at that. Well, that's certainly, we can do that. That's about skill building and learning how to not see it as foreign and an enemy, but actually part of me. And how do you do that? Like going to the gym and working out a muscle you don't have now, we can do that. Um, and so the other avenue, though, is you are really out of alignment. Why are you doing this? Another option is, is this a relationship that's really feeding you? Is this a, is this a job that is, uh, it, it may have run its course. You've gotten to the end. Tip your hat and be grateful for all that it gave you. 
and get the hell out. I mean, is, is a, uh, some version of that is what's down that road. And, the, um, and those are very different um, uh, avenues. Um, and, um, and I enjoy both of them because your question was, which, you know, which kind of do you like more? I like them both. What I don't like and what horrifies me actually is when I'm not on the same page. I thought we were on a get out of here kind of course, and it turns out I'm being paid to <laughs> help you do more tea stuff, or 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 maybe it's the, the, the other way around that I I want to get practical, and so here's a checklist: pick two things and let's practice that. And you're actually trying to spiritually align yourself with the work that you do, and so it's very important that I am on your sheet of music, whatever that is. Um, and so the I like either as long as I'm following you. Would that kind of misalignment ever lead you to have to turn down a gig or, you know, kind of step back? All the time. In fact, I, I'm not, I, uh, I am not always happy about this, but the, um, right off the bat, I, I believe, and so most of our work, we probably about 30% of our work, 25 uh, maybe, is coaching. Uh, so we do coaching as a firm. I personally don't do a lot of coaching. So I've got staff who are, are certified and do, do that really well. And, and many of them do it much better than I do. Um, and so people still come to me because they know me from here or there or whatever and ask for coaching. And I, and I don't mind at all doing it, I like it. But the thing is, I, um, I'm very task driven in, in a coaching relationship in terms of let's, we should be working towards something. Um, and, um, and so let's keep an eye. So I, I don't want this to just unfold where every week we talk and share and engage or get, I mean, I'd like to have this headed in some direction. Now we can keep shifting that so that the goal keeps going further and further out, but we we need a destination. And, um, and a lot of coaching is a little more organic than that and isn't quite so uh, driven. And the, um, and the other thing is that I, um, I, I think that, um, I, I want to be honest in a coaching engagement, which means that sometimes, even though you, Richard, are paying me to coach um, uh, uh, Harumi, it's uh, that uh, if you just want Harumi to have more skills, well, if it turns out in that natural coaching, honest engagement, she goes, "Why am I here? And what am I? Uh, what am I doing?" That the, then we need to actually. Um, go down a different path. Uh, and, and, and so that's, so sometimes if, if the employer, whoever's paying, um, realizes I'm not going to read off of your checklist, then they say, well, why would I pay you? I like, maybe you shouldn't. I mean, maybe that's not the, uh, and then, so I've turned down some, some jobs uh, there. I don't say that arrogantly because I don't like not being able to help some people, but it's, it's I, I, I definitely have a point of view and a point of view some people don't want. Mm, yeah, well, it certainly aligns with the introverted feeling integrity. That's for sure. well, I, I hadn't yeah, put it in those terms, but yeah, I, I guess that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're at quarter two now. Just, uh, we could have another few minutes. And one thing um, we mentioned before was about Pop Your Bubble. This was a program you were you were bringing online. Well, what, what's that about? Oh, well, actually, it, it's funny because I just did it last week for the first time, but a couple... Uh, a couple years ago, uh, so here in the United States, uh, Donald Trump was elected back a few years ago, and um, and uh, the next year, so in 2017, 2018, there was a big uh, ATD, Association for Training and Development, uh, whatever, a seminar or, or uh, a conference, and so I put a keynote together, and I was really excited about it, called Pop Your Bubble and Save the World, and my fantasy is that throngs of people would come to it. Oh my gosh, this is so great. I loved it. And so I had all kinds of, I loved thinking about it. And then I went and did this gig and it kind of plopped. Uh, it, it, eh, uh, they, uh, and uh, in fact, I had halfway through a couple of people got out and left. That, uh, that tends not to be the impact I have on groups. And the, um, and so I, um, but, but the essence of this presentation, pop your bubble and save the world is really talking about that we are in bubbles, not just in the United States, around the world, we're in bubbles of, uh, we tend to live with people who are like us. We go to school, we send our kids to schools with people who are like us. We are plugged into social media and media in general that, that tell us what we wanna hear. And, um, and so 
and all these things just further bubble us. And it's very important if we want to grow and develop and survive, I think that we need to get out of these bubbles. And you do that by um, and what, I, what I've done is so here are three tools, three tools that you have heard of, maybe have sitting around. Um, so let's talk about how you can use these tools to help pop your bubble. And type is one of them. And basically, P, not P's, as in people would prefer perception, but, uh, but perception um, is a bubble popping function. Uh, it's new data. And so inhale new data, get new ideas, uh, uh, plug in to what's actually going on and getting new data pops your bubble. So we, we talk about what that is and why that is. And here's some, even if you don't know type, here's some things you could do to activate perception in your life. Um, with narrative intelligence, Jung's other great gift that I love just as much as type are the archetypes. And archetypes are very important bubble popping things. The, uh, that we, we get enmeshed in these narratives and these narratives control and structure what we see and how we see it and how I regard you, Richard. And what, uh, so it, it really sets in a narrative and those narratives can be very helpful and they're inevitable, but they're also toxic and rigid. And so one of the ways that you can, can pop your bubble is to question your narrative. What other narrative could this be? Um, and so we talked about a little, some tips on how to stretch and expand your narrative, to, to, to doubt and question your narrative, consider someone else's. Um, and then we talked about emotional intelligence, the, uh, the, the things like reality testing, em, um, empathy, uh, there are flexibility. There's some some key emotional intelligence behaviors that are naturally bubble popping behaviors. Uh, take in new data and change your mind. And the um, and so the thing that pushed against this, uh, and, and now I realize what what um, why people dislike the people who did, because not everybody did, but the people who did, um, uh, they disliked it because the the feedback I got was. I'm fine. I don't need anything. How do I pop his bubble? How do I pop her bubble? I, I, I'm, I'm, my bubble's fine. Um, uh, but the, uh, it's, it's my neighbor. It's my, and the, um, and it's like, yeah, we're not talking about that. It, this is it, it supplied to self and the, um, and they were still to, in the United States at that time. It, I, and maybe still, but it was still too fresh. I don't want unilateral disarmament. I want to know how to beat those people. Uh, and the, um, and so that's not about changing your bubble. That's about finding more people who understand my bubble and let's go beat them up, which is not a training I will ever, <laughs> ever be able to, to deliver. But anyway, again, more than you asked for, but that's the, um, the but that's the pop your bubble, save the world. I still do that um, uh, from time to time, but that's been a real interesting journey. It's wonderful, what a great project. I, I think it you know, speaks to Jung's, you know, ideas of one-sidedness being something broader than type as well. You know, like you said, type is, is a part of that. It's a great model for understanding it. It's not everything about one-sidedness. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 and crucially, you know, the point is that it starts at home. You know, you have to look at yourself um, to change the world, you know. So, it goes back to something I first learned from Otto, but that is that self-awareness toward better self-management is the foundation. That's not to say that we can't do something or that you uh, uh, can't do something, but it starts with me. Everybody should start with me. Another challenging idea I had just in that um, uh, is, and, and this is a, a challenging OKAism uh, that um, it, we, I tell clients this a lot. It's a challenging idea, but I really stand by it that, um, people like to do group level and team level stuff. That's great. That's one of my core things. But, um, but my assertion is that groups don't change. Groups don't grow. Uh, systems don't grow. Individuals alone grow. Um, and then the group is going to change when enough individuals, when you have critical mass of individuals who have actually shown up and done something different today that they didn't do yesterday. And when enough of that happens, then critical mass actually makes the teeter-totter kind of shrunk in this direction and it, we have some momentum. But so for somebody to say, okay, we as a group have decided X, you still haven't done anything. You, you, you then need to 
Richard needs to do something. Heil needs to do something. Uh, Catherine needs to do something. Ian needs to do something. And that's the, um, so that's the, um, that's the idea. And, but it all comes back to me deciding to do something or nothing's going to happen. That's great. It's a wonderfully profound point to, to, I think, to end the discussion on today. It's been really fascinating. Thank you so much, Michelle. Oh, yeah. Um, love to get you back again some other time for another conversation. Um, I'd love it. I'd love it. It's great. And, you know, um, hopefully everyone can check out your, your website and your work with OKA. What, what is the website? It's uh, OKA hyphen online, O N L I N E dot com. Okay, well, well, I'll certainly be checking out the, the Pop Your Bubble, Change Your Worlds. Um, it's exciting stuff. So, yeah, thank you so much again. I thank you, everyone, for coming along. Um, it's been another great webinar, and uh, do look out for the conference coming up soon as well, uh, online conference, 100 Years of Type. Hope to see, see some, some of you there. And um, you guys take care. Stay safe. All right? Thank you. Be well. Cheers. Bye-bye.